time to Cupid on mute, everyone. We'll be starting in just a few minutes, so sit tight and get ready for love. Hi, I'm Cheryl Platts, the director of Cupid on Mute and associate artistic director of digital productions at Unexpected Productions. I wanted to welcome you here and let you know how this show works. Cupid on Mute is an interactive show, but it's a little bit more interactive than some shows on this channel. Not only can you interact via chat to give suggestions when we ask, but you can also donate tax deductible donations to influence what's happening on screen. Just look for the Tiltify links in chat. Head over there, look at the donation incentives, and pick an incentive that helps you help the couple you want to help, or slow down the romance that you're not rooting for. If you've ever wished that you could influence the romances on your favorite reality show, now is the time. And all of those donations help keep our theater running, help us pay our actors, help us pay our staff members, and help us make sure that Unexpected Productions continues to survive this extended pandemic. So thank you for supporting the arts and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Annie Arrow, the host of Cupid on Mute. <laughs> You know, at, at Cupid Enterprises, we were supposed to help people find love digitally, but my boss, Cupid, is terrible at the internet. Oh, uh, you, you're on mute, Cupid. Uh, you just, it's the little microphone button down on the, down on the lower left of your screen. Yeah, just click the, get the mouse. Well, no, not with your finger. Just, um, use the mouse and, and, and move it over to the microphone. And oh, oh, oh. So we're a little behind. And so I thought, what better way to help people find love on the internet than a competition show? And so we have eight romantics who have not been able to find love on the internet and have agreed to focus their energies over the next four weeks on each other through our group video chats. And we need your help. Audience, you will be able to help or hinder their love through the use of incentives powered by your donations. So choose couples you like, choose couples you don't like, figure out how you want these relationships to go and see if you can nudge them in the right direction, just like Cupid. And then at the end of the four weeks, we will crown a winning couple who will gain Cupid's arrow. Theirs will be the truest of the true love. We'll probably give them some sort of prize the producers are still working out. So please help us help these romantics find true love. Help me get the backlog cleared while we buy my CEO some time to figure out the internet.
everyone, and welcome to Cupid on Mute. Thank you so much for joining us on this exciting journey through love. Uh, I am Annie Arrow, and you just met me through the power of video, but now I'm here live with you. So excited. Now today, this is the first of our four-week journey to find love. And I don't know if any of you out there have been trying to find love on the internet, but it's hard. Yeah. So let's find out how we can help these folks. We are going to meet eight romantics who have been struggling with romance, struggling to find love, and they have volunteered to spend these next four weeks together through our group chats. So let's find out, let's meet them. And before we meet them, I know that some of you have been really excited about this show. And I know some of you have been doing your research. So I'm going to be coming to chat to find out what the occupation is for each of these romantics. So hopefully you've done your research or or you have some good ideas. So just, just keep the, those ideas in your head because I'm going to be coming to you in just a minute. But hopefully you're ready to meet the eight romantics we're going to be living with and following for the next eight for the next four weeks. So many numbers. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call my first contestant out. And my first contestant, my first romantic, this is going to be Ember Lee Smith. Ember Lee, why don't you come out and join us? Hello, Ember Lee. Do you want to introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, hi. Um, I'm Emberly Smith, and um, I'm from Austin. I am 37 years old, and um, you know, I I haven't had a whole lot of success out there yet. But I just know there's someone who is really going to appreciate the way that I bake. You know. So you're a baker. That's one, you know, somebody could be very lucky to lock you down. And just to, so our audience knows, those are digital glasses. We've asked our contestants to use digital masks or real life masks to partially obscure their appearance. Because, you know, sometimes people make rash judgments based on physical appearance. And we don't want that to mar our contestants' initial impression of each other. So. It, for the first part of this episode, people will be partially partially veiled in mystery. But when we get to $200 in donations today, the masks will come off and their uh, appearance will be fully revealed, uh, unlocking the rest of that physical connection. All right, chat. Now, I know that you've been excited and I, I'm, I'm coming to you to find out what is Emberly's occupation? What, what does Emberly do for a living? Because baking's a hobby, but baking isn't what Emberly does. And Emberly, do you prefer Ember or Emberly? Is it, is, what's, how do you prefer to be addressed? Oh, I'm, I'm Emberly. Emberly. And, and what are your pronouns, Emberly? Uh, she, her. She, Thank her. you. Excellent. Uh, so for all of you wrote folks in chat, what is it? What is an occupation that Ember Lee has? Could be anything at all. Doesn't have to be related to baking. Professional hoarder. So and, and that's right, isn't it? <laughs> They've done their research. You're a professional hoarder. As a, and as I understand, you have a web series about professional hoarding, uh, which is how you've turned that into a career. Uh, so I look forward to learning more about that during the show. Uh, well, it's great to meet you, Emberly, and I wish you all the best of luck finding your true love on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and now we are going to uh, we are going to go to our next contestant, and that is going to be uh, we're going to call Thomas Jeremiah up. Hello. Uh, my name is Thomas Samuel Jeremiah from Galena, Illinois, uh, age 41. The producer said you got to come up with a slogan to sum yourself up, and um, I'm working on it. And I, that's a wonderful phrase. So you're committed to self-improvement then, or am I just reading too much into that slogan? I'll take it. <laughs> wonderful. So Thomas Jeremiah, so uh, Thomas is okay? Can I call you Thomas? Yep, that's just fine. And your pronouns are? Oh, the guy ones, he and all. He and all? All right. And so, Thomas, I, I'm going to go ahead and go to chat and ask t chat, what is Thomas's occupation? What is it that Thomas, uh, I hear butcher. So, Thomas, you're a butcher, is that correct? That is correct. I think steak is beautiful, burgers are wonderful, and 
Well, I helped make that happen. Don't ask how. <laughs> and do you have any special hopes for what you're going to get out of Cupid on Mute? Connection, people. I mean, I, I moved away from the hometown and it's just been a little hard to get to meet new people. And last year it got a whole lot harder. I told myself, you're still single after 40. You've got to say yes to whatever might come along. And well, I'm saying yes to this and I hope I get to say yes to somebody through it. Wonderful. Well, thank you. It's wonderful to meet you, Thomas Jeremiah. And best of luck. And thank so you. Our next our next contestant is going to be Max Chucksworth. I'm going to call Max to the stage or our virtual stage. Hello, Max. And for those of you just joining us, I see some new folks in chat. You may be wondering why we have the Cyclops here with us. And in the beginning of our first episode, we've asked our contestants to obscure their identity using digital or physical masks because we want to avoid those hasty physical and first impressions from preventing true love from forming. So when we get to $200 of donations today, then the masks will come off. But without further ado, Max, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I just want to say that I, I kind of disagree with that rule because I'm really more impressive at first. Uh, that That's why I like first impressions, because like then people listen to me talk and they realize how how like not smart I am. So like my first impression is really important to me. I just want to throw that out there. Um, hi, I, I'm Max Chucksworth. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I am 33 years old and I come from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Um, I, I guess you could call me a trust fund baby or at least a Wisconsin trust fund baby because like uh, that, that means my family has at least five cows. Five um, cows? At least five, at least five. Uh, I could tell you how many I have, but you know, that would be kind of tooting my own horn. I don't <laughs> want to do that. I love yeah. your humility. And so, uh, so chat, uh, coming back to you. So what is your, the occupation that Max has? Uh, well, the first one I see is a uh, dairy farmer. Uh, and that's, is, 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 are you a dairy farmer, Max? Well, I mean, yeah, you got as many cows as I do. You got to make cheese or something. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I, I love your, your, your perspective on life, your, your perspective on first impressions, Max. And yeah. I, I hope that you find the love you're seeking. Uh, it's wonderful to meet you. And our next contestant I'm going to call to the stage is going to be Chaz Montgomery. Chaz Montgomery to the stage. Hey, I'm Chaz Montgomery and I like to party, but I love love. I love to party, but I like, I love to party. I like to party, but I love love. You know what I love about this is that it, it's not rehearsed. You're, you're just you. You're figuring it out as you go. Right. Uh, and I am 29, 28, 20, 29. I'm 29 and I'm from Miami, Florida. And I like to love and I live to party. Mm. Yeah. I'm very convinced, Chaz. Very convinced. <laughs> and I'm hearing from I, I'm hearing from uh, from chat that, yeah. that you're actually a Wall Street mogul. Uh, uh, are we supposed to say that out loud? Um, it was that. Uh, I thought that part of our job was going to be hidden so that people wouldn't know what we. Because like a mask and like a, I mean, if people knew that I was a Wall Street mogul, they would probably want my money or something. And I feel like Wall Street. Yeah, I am, but uh, don't tell the other, can they hear me right now, the other contestants? It just depends on how good they are at listening. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I, am, I am a Wall Street mogul, but don't tell the other contestants because I would like them to think that I'm cooler than, you know, uh, they're, okay, great. Mm -hmm. And, what and I am- I'm also 29. I really am, but basically, mm -hmm. yeah. It it is hard to keep track of those things. And and what did you say your <laughs> pronouns were? Oh, 
my pronouns are are he him most of the time so that's 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 pretty much fine for now what yeah, you know I what mean, i love about you is everything is fungible Chaz. age uh <laughs> slogan pronouns everything the occupation you, you just you can't pin you down uh, let's see oh. if someone <laughs> let's see if one of the romantics can pin you down <laughs> oh oh <laughs> Uh, I'm super eligible. I am, I'm super eligible, but I'm not desperate. So I'm really excited about being here. Uh, that would be, uh, yay! Yay! Oh, good luck, Chaz. Good Thanks. luck. Yeah, oh. yeah. So our next, our, our, our next, our very next romantic that I'm going to call to the stage is Maya Ruby. So Maya Ruby, come on and introduce yourself to us. We're excited to meet you. Um, my name is Maya Ruby, and I'm 25, so I'm probably the youngest romantic in here. And I'm from Ramona, California. And you know, I just have to say, it's never you're never too young to find love, and um, like should start early. So you know, I've I've never been in a serious relationship before, but I'm here to find love. I know it's time. So never I'm you've never been oh i'm so excited for you maya there's so much joy to be found <laughs> and uh, so maya what did you say your pronouns are my pronouns are she her wonderful and so chat what uh, what occupation does maya have so we, we maya mentioned that she's the youngest of the group oh oh my oh my goodness oh my goodness i'm hearing that you are a you are a, a, an idol singer who's popular in Japan. Is that, is that true? Have I seen are some of my fans in the chat? Like, am I? I yes, I yes, you have fans in chat. Yes. Yes, I. That's exactly. I'm. I'm. I'm so glad that they made it here. Um, that's exactly what I am. Oh I'm, my I'm, goodness! I'm just that in Japan. <laughs> oh well, we're honored to have you here. The producers did a great job bringing you here. I can't wait to see. Boy, someone's gonna be lucky if they can find you, love. Uh, uh, that's just that's just wonderful. Uh, and what what do you what do you picture when you picture love? Oh my! When I picture love, I just you know. So, not to say that you know I'm a gold digger or I like money or you know things like that, but. I picture like the perfect wedding ring. In fact, sometimes I just, you know, carry a ring around and try it around, try it out on my finger just to see if it fits. So, you know, I I just have to say if it fits, you know, that that's all that I'm looking for. Well, just and I hope love. the love fits for you, Maya. I do. So it's wonderful to meet you. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank and you. I want to thank our chat for our donations. I'll be announcing those soon. And we're going to be getting to what that means for everyone once we get done with our introductions. So thank you for that generosity. Oh, so exciting. So our next romantic to come on stage and introduce themselves is Pepper Bleba. So Bleb Blebla. Am I saying that right? Very nice to meet you. Blebla. Blebla. Hi. Hi, Hi it's Blebla. Hi. It's French. Oh, wonderful to meet you, Pepper. Tell us about yourself. All right. My name is Pepper Blebla and um I'm a she her and I'm 42. <laughs> and, um, you know, a fun fact about me is that um, I have been at most uh, televised events for the last 20 years. And currently I'm I'm uh, I'm in Brooklyn Heights. I'm I'm house sitting. Uh, you've been at most televised. So just most of all of the televised events in the world. Oh, yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and if I, you look closely at video feeds, um, you will see me. You will see me. I yeah. Can't, I can't wait to go look for you. And I hear mm -hmm. that you are a fashion dog groomer. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <gasps> I appreciate beauty, and um, I can bring out beauty in any living creature. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so not just dogs, but, but more than dogs. Well, I mean, dogs, that's what I do for a living is the dogs, but I'm saying that love and beauty is something that I have majored in during my, my time here on the planet. So <laughs> I'm all about that. 
<laughs> That's wonderful. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. You know, we're so glad to have you here. And I'm looking forward to hearing your perspective on how you bring out the best in all living creatures. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And good luck finding love. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. So the next romantic I'm going to call to the stage is, is Skip Richards. Hi there, hey. Skip. Hey y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm Skip Richards. Um, I'm, I'm 50. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Um, and I just got to say that uh, if loose lips sink ships, then I'm looking forward to this boat going down. A boat you say? Tell me more. Well, I just, uh, you know, with everything going on in the world right now, I just decided that, uh, that I was going to spend the last year and a half living on my boat. And uh, so, but, but it gets kind of lonely out there on the sea. And so I decided to, you know, come out here and meet somebody and see if maybe I can find a shipmate. Now, I, I'm surprised that you were willing to reveal this for us, Skip, but um, I'm hearing that, that you're an international jewel thief. Is, is that correct? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a jewel redistributor. Um, it, it is a totally legitimate business. Um, and uh, I, I, any thieving accusations um, would, would, would probably not have enough evidence to be proven in court. Fair enough, fair enough. You know, everybody has to make a living somehow. And what did you say your pronouns were? Uh, he, him. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, it sounds like you lead a very exciting life. And we are lucky to, to get you in one place for a couple weeks. And may I say, your internet connection is amazing for being on a boat. I want to talk to your provider. <laughs> well, uh, and, and for anyone who's just joining us, this is not Skip's actual face. We've asked all of our romantics to obscure their appearance in some way during our masquerade ball portion of episode one to avoid any hasty first impressions based on appearance, because you know how humans can be. But when we get to $200 worth of donations supporting unexpected productions, our producers, then the masks will come off and people can make snap judgments based on appearance. <laughs> so Skip, it's great to meet you. Best of luck. And hopefully the Popo are not watching. Hope not. <laughs> oh, yes. And so last but certainly not least, one of our most uh, erudite uh, uh, of our contestants, I'm going to call romantic Charlie Wilson to the stage. Charlie, hello. I'm so glad to be talking to you today. And I'm so glad you got to join us. You had an interesting journey to get here. Am I right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've had love in my, my past. I... Uh... Got married when I was about uh, when I was about Maya's age, and uh, my wife uh, passed away about uh, thirty years ago. So I've been single ever since. And uh, my granddaughters, uh, two of my lovely granddaughters, persuaded me to <laughs> to take part in this. They think that I'm lonely. I'm I'm not lonely. I just am alone. But that's okay. I'm always looking for something interesting, and so here I am. Well, that is so wonderful that you have granddaughters in your life that care about you that much. Now, what did you say your pronouns are? Oh, yeah. uh, he, him. He, him. Wonderful. And so I'm uh, going to go back to chat because I need to find out what your occupation is. Uh, I'm very curious. So uh, chat, uh, what I know you've been looking up all the contestants. What does Charlie do for a living? Because he's not retired yet. Uh, and so... Uh, now uh, I'm hearing it's. Let's see. Now it's. It would be interesting. It's. It's interesting because it's. I hear you work at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Is that is that true? Am I hearing that correctly, Skip? Or uh, Charlie? Yes, not as I used to, but I do. I do work at Disneyland from time to time. Wonderful. Do you have a? Like, do you rotate between different attractions or do, anything specific you do there? Actually, I do voice work there, and I, I narrate some of the rides and, and things, but I do that remotely with this uh, with this microphone that's right here uh, off off screen. Oh, my uh, goodness. Can you narrate something for us right now? Like, uh, t tell us to keep our hands inside the vehicle. Keep your hands inside the vehicle. Oh, my God. That was so realistic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my 
my goodness. Oh, how exciting. Well, I'm so excited you're here with us, Charlie. Uh, and uh, thank you to your granddaughters for bringing you, uh, bringing us, you to us. And so I think, I think we've covered everyone. We've had Thomas, we've had Skip, we've had Pepper, we've had Maya, we've had Max, we've had Ember, we've had Chaz and Charlie. So now I'm going to ask all of our, uh, oh, do you have, a, do you have something else, Charlie? Did, did you want to know my age? Oh, or are you going to let that slide? Oh, I thought you were intentionally not sharing. What is your age? Uh, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm I'm a week older than Mick Jagger and three months younger than Joe Biden. Wh which is how old? I'd be 78. Wonderful. That's amazing. You do not look 78. You look fantastic. That's that pixie dust, probably. <laughs> The eye patch helps. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we are so glad to have you here. And, you know, love finds us at any age. So I'm excited to see what you find here. So I am going to go ahead and call all of our romantics to the stage so that we can you can meet each other for the first time in our masquerade ball. Excellent. Excellent. It looks like we've got almost everybody in the room. And here we go. Meet the romantics, everyone. And while you're doing that, I want to announce a couple of the generous donations that have come in oh. during our uh, introductory process. So uh, we have received, folks are very excited about you folks oh. here. And I want to announce one exciting thing that's going on. Um, one of you is going to get the right to have the first one-on-one -on -one date next week. So our audience is voting to see who's going to win that right. Uh, so Ember Lee received a vote, uh, some votes for that uh, earlier er, earlier today. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at like, the rest of the donations. We also have uh, we had uh, Max received some votes uh, for the right to have a first one-on-one -on -one date next week. And Chaz has received the first of our speed dating tokens. So later oh. in today's episode, we're going to have a round of speed dating where each of our romantics is going to get the chance to ask uh, ask another romantic some some questions in a, in a very quick environment. They can butt in on other romantics conversations. Kind, uh, but everyone only gets one chance to butt in on speed dating unless you give them extra speed dating tokens. And Chaz now oh. has an extra extra one. So congratulations, yes. Chaz. Yeah. And let's take a look at what else has been going on, because so much has been going on. Uh, and Ooh. so thank you to Admiral Asma for this, for Chaz's speed dating token. Thank you to David Demma Jr. for, uh, and uh, Admiral Asma for the votes for Max and Ember Lee. Uh, Admiral Asma also, uh, there's several votes from Admiral Asma, which is excellent. Uh, so Chaz has one vote. Uh, Chaz... Uh, Pepper also received a speed dating token, which is going to be very exciting. Uh, Chaz, you've received some votes for uh, the ability to, uh, more votes, I believe, for the ability to have that one-on-one -on -one date next week. And uh, the first of the one-on-one -on -one dates, Ember Lee, looks like William has voted for you to receive those uh, th that one-on-one -on -one date next week. And we have our first confirmation Confessional. William has asked to send Ember Lee to the confessional. Uh, so we, anyone uh, in our chat who wants to learn any any more about a contestant can ask them to go to uh, can ask them to go to the confessional. They can name a particular romantic. So I'm going to ask everybody to step out for a second, except Ember Lee. And oops, that's not the right one. There we go. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone, uh, but Ember Lee, here we go. And so Ember Lee, you heard every everybody's introductions. You're new here. Uh, our audience just wants to hear from you for a minute or two about like what what's in your heart? What are you feeling right now? What what's 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 going on with Ember Lee? Well, um you know, I I think that everything has a place in this world and and I think that people in particular have an intrinsic value and I see a lot of people here with with a lot of value. And I honestly, like if I had to pick someone right now, I'm not sure I could. I I I, I love all of them and I wish I could just get all of them, you know, with me. Um they're they're just amazing. But I'm I'm really worried because, you know, sometimes 
everybody gets all excited about the hype of, you know, being with someone who's on TV and, um, and they don't necessarily like, like when they come into my house and they see all of these precious things with their unique value, all just stacked up on each other in every single nook and cranny, like it, it can be hard for people to be around that. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm worried that, that, someone will like me, but then they'll walk away when they see my house. I hope that people will not judge you for your house just as much as they're not going to judge you for what you look like today. Uh, but thank you for sharing that. I'm sure our audience appreciates getting to know you a little bit better. So thank you, Emberly. Thank you, William, for bringing Emberly to the confessional booth. And I'm going to invite all of our romantics back onto the stage because we have an exciting icebreaker question from our audience. Uh, so we have received our first icebreaker question. The audience wants to get to know you better. And so we have from an anonymous donor Kel Mystique, uh, they have asked the question, reveal a secret you've never told anyone before. Boy, they are hitting hard from the start. So thank you to our anonymous donor. And who wants to go first? And if no one volunteers, I'm gonna call on someone. Uh, I can go first. So my secret is that the only reason I'm a Korean Idol pop singer and not an American one is because I wasn't confident enough to compete with the people here. And I thought if I, you know, if I went to a place where no one knew me, I would do so much better because if I did badly, then no one would judge me. So I, I was, I was too scared to try and pursue my talents in a place where other people knew me. Uh, wait, you're a, 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 a famous singer? Yeah, I I am. I mean, not not here I, in Korea, but I do have fans everywhere. And um, I, yeah. I heard you have. Did I see you? Um, I thought I saw you in Japan too. Mm -hmm. Were you? That's where I saw her in Japan. I mean, you have a phenomenal voice, by the way. <laughs> Just want to throw that you. out there. Yeah. Thank you. Your music always puts my cows right to sleep when I go out for their evening lullaby. <sighs> Oh. That's that's the nicest thing to say that if anyone's ever said about my singing. Yeah, I, I saw you when I was sailing by the Philippines. So you're just huge all over Asia. It's yeah. You know, I, it's 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 amazing. But, you know, I wish I could have the same influence in America, but I'm just not, you know, confident enough to do that here. Well, everybody's oh. being so sweet, but we have seven more secrets to reveal. Oh. I mean, I was hoping to not have to say it. So, uh, um, well, so well, you, you all know that I bake and um, I, my best friend, we had a falling out. Um, so I baked her some cookies and I really overdid the baking soda. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. On purpose? Yes. Oh, Watch out, everybody. That, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> what happens when that happens? They taste oh, like they're edible. Soda. They're, they're, they're inedible. It, it was, I mean, it was, I, I, I said it was unintentional, but I, it was intentional. My mom always said there was nothing worse than giving somebody a cookie they can't actually eat. I thought so too. Amen. So Looks like, like did you did you stand there and like watch her eat it like so that she had to pretend that it was really delicious because that's just mean. I, did she die? It, <gasps> no. I mean, uh, I don't know if that I don't know if baking soda kills people. I mean, I don't. It uh, makes you gassy, honestly, oh, which oh. could kill you if you ate it or enough. others. A significant amount of it. I mean, my intent wasn't to kill her, just to make her pay. Would you do it again? Mm. Would I do it again? I mean, are you reformed? No. <gasps> Wait, no to you wouldn't do it again or no to you ref 
formed. Important I question. feel like you need to plead the fifth, Your Honor, on Isle of that. But I mean, realistically, look, if your best friend comes at you and intentionally steals the partner that you've been with for five years, oh, would oh. you not you put admit, a lot admit, of baking soda into their cookies? No, that's Absolutely, I would not. Food safety is paramount. Well, you know what? Sometimes you just have to take desperate measures, and I took a desperate measure, and I don't regret it. Is desperate not measuring. measures the name of your baking company? That's a nice, that's a good name. That is mm. a good name. I mean, I, I don't have a baking company yet, but if I did, I feel like that would be, that would be a good name for it. Maybe you should work toward it. Oh, no. I mean, I do have enough measuring cups to be able to do that. I have a lot of measuring cups. Two wrongs never make a right. <sighs> but sometimes they make you feel better. And there's wrong and, and there's, you know, illegally prosecutable wrong. They're different things. <laughs> That's true. true. Those are very different things. Is that related yeah. to your secret, Skip? What's your secret? She was just talking about the Fifth Amendment. Skip, you have to share it's, something it's with our audience. Mm -hmm. There has to be some secret you have, Skip, that is not protected by the Fifth Amendment. Okay, well, you know, I've been spending a lot of time alone on a boat, and uh, I, I do have my cat, Athena, with me. Oh, and uh, she's a sweetie, she cuddles, and, and I've just discovered that uh, the longer I'm out away from other people, the more I can read her thoughts. I can actually mentally communicate with my cat. No, I, 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 get, I get that, I get that. Yeah. Animals are really empathetic, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, the weird thing is she's got a French accent. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Nice. So is I'm going to interrupt our sharing for a second because we've had a lot of donations come in. People are excited oh. by our romantics. Uh, cool. So I want to congratulate a couple of people who have received some new tokens. Uh, we've had... Uh, We've had Thomas gets a new token from William. Uh, so congratulations. Chaz, you've received more votes for next week's one-on-one -on -one yes. date, first one-on-one -on -one date. Uh, Charlie, you've received votes for the first one-on-one -on -one date next week. And Charlie, you've also received a speed dating token. So congratulations for that. And we are $1 away from the removal of the masks in our masquerade ball. Just $1 away. So I wonder if anybody will be motivated to to take those masks off so we've heard secrets from skip ember and and we've heard a secret from maya and the, the very revealing oh oh my goodness something else has just come in and that means oh. it's time for the masks to come off they the masks are coming off so i'm going to give everyone a second i'm going to pull the romantics off screen so that you can remove the, your the your obscuring identity obscuring devices and for the first time, our audience is going to be able to see the real romantics. And I thank all of our audience for their generosity that's making this possible. So I, I, romantics, just take a deep breath because you, you, you might be hit with new feels. And, and uh, so here we go. I'm going to count you down in three, two, one. Here we are. The real romantics. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey. <laughs> we are an attractive bunch of people. Dang right. Yeah. Yeah. You can only pick one, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At the end. But I think we're contractually obligated to like have a thing with everyone. That's it's what true. It, it is true. Yeah. Uh, so we've heard three secrets from three folks. We've got five more to get to, and we've got a new icebreaker question after that. And oh, I gosh. wanted to let <laughs> and I wanted to let uh, Maya know that you've also received a vote for the, having the first one on one oh. date next week. So congrats on that, and thank you to our anonymous donor who got us over the hump for revealing those masks. So who's our next secret revealer? I'll go. Wonderful. Okay, so. Like, I know there's that adage, like, never kiss and tell, but I just want to say that I've had over 1,000 lovers. Wow. Oh! That's amazing. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I stopped counting in 1,000. Wow. Um, when, when did you stop counting? Was it like five, mm -hmm. and then you were like, oh, 1,000? 
No, at a thousand. I stopped counting at a thousand. I don't know if you heard me say that, but that's what I said. <laughs> so, as someone who works professionally in romance, did uh-huh. you track it with like a spreadsheet or something? What, how did you keep that many count? <clears throat> Or was it well, just like one of those little clickers? That, like, that's exactly right, right, Thomas. That's what oh. I was going to say. It was a pitch count. But it does sound to me like there were plenty of spreadsheets involved. <laughs> <laughs> you are so clever. I love it. I love how clever you are. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Why is everyone laughing? No, it was great. It was so no, Max, you, you're smart. Max is so funny. Yeah. yeah, they're really funny. Yep, I'm funny. I'm yeah. Funny. Mm-hmm. So, Max, do you have a secret to share? Um. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this one time, um. I'm sorry. This really gets me. Um. We had a blizzard in Oconomowoc, and we got five feet of snow. And I accidentally left a cow out in the pasture and he froze to death just standing up. He had little, like, utter icicles hanging off. And they just... <laughs> oh, yes. I'm just... Oh, I know. Uh, uh, it's, it's... They're there. I, um... Oh, boy. Part of uh, me died that day, too. Oh. As somebody who works with animals, I I feel that. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's a moving story. Yeah. Not the time. Oh. Too soon. Sorry. Snip. Well, thank you for sharing, Max. I'm so sorry you went through that. How about- that doesn't mean I'm not worthy of love. Of, of, co- of course you're worthy of love. Of course you're worthy of love. How, how about um, how about you, Chaz? What's what's a secret you can share with the group? Oh, um, yeah, that's just really hard to follow. And that was so. Uh, I'll tell two secrets. One that's mine and one that belongs to a friend of mine. Uh, so the secret that's mine is, uh, so you know my name's Chaz, it's my nickname and everybody calls me that. And you know how like uh, with nicknames, like your friends, you know, they they give you a nickname because like you're, you're cool and everything. And like, that's uh, me uh, and uh, uh, well, I uh, so I actually uh, gave myself the nickname Chaz, I kind of feel like it's almost the same if you give it to yourself versus if like all your cool party friends give it to you. Um, so technically I, I, I gave myself the nickname Chaz, uh, but but like it still counts as a nickname and everyone should still call me that because, uh, but if I don't respond right away to Chaz, it might be because I'm not used to people calling me that, but I'm but like it's a really cool nickname and it kind of makes you seem really cool. So like totally call me Chaz and, and that is, absolutely my nickname starting for this show. So that's the secret that is mine. Uh, and I'm just gonna tell a secret that belongs to a friend of mine, just for a friend, just for a friend. Um, I might know someone um, who might have been responsible for that whole uh, game shop thing. There was like a, a store game shop, they sold video games and like just recently they just kind of went super like and they were sort of dying and they went super wild with their stock prices and some people made a huge amount of money uh on that some people like my friend my friend did made a whole lot of money on that and then my friend might have put out some things into the media and then like but sold all their stocks first uh and then right before they like froze all the stock things because there's a whole thing on like uh, you know wall street beats it was like a whole thing and then like all that stock got sold everything collapsed but that friend of mine who was definitely not me uh still had all that money and you know has a lot of really sweet video games as well from game shop but what's your friend's name yeah oh uh 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 Chez. 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 My goodness. Sounds like a, a twin sibling or something there, Chaz. <laughs> they, they... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. Thomas well, sounds French. Uh, well, thank you for sharing those two secrets there. And I, I just want to repeat that I hope that no one in law enforcement is watching for the sake of several of our contestants. Uh, and oh. let's move. Uh, let's move on to Thomas. Thomas, do you have any secrets that you you can share? I, 
y'all are hoping law enforcement isn't watching and uh, I'm hoping the USDA isn't watching here. Cow has lost its challenge. You, oh. you carve enough beef and at some point the mystery is gone. I disagree. <gasps> I'm, Strong I'm, mystery is always there. I'm glad you still have the magic. But for me, it, it's chicken. Ch chicken is still craft. It's small. Oh. You, you got to be more careful. But I, I miss the magic of looking at a cow and just seeing everything it's about to be. It's just not the same without that. And I don't know how to get it back. Come, come to my farm and look one in the eye sometime. It's living eye with the twinkle and spark of life. No, never. Those are dairy cows. They're meant for different things. At the end of the day, cow's a cow. They're all meant to be alive. Well, that's that. these are hard-hitting secrets, and I appreciate everyone's honesty, and I'm sure the chat does as well. And I think the only person we haven't heard from for this icebreaker challenge is Charlie. So, Charlie, what secret do you want to share with the romantics? Just wanted to say that, that I've had deep personal relationships with cattle, uh, uh, one, one in particular, but I, I, won't, I won't trouble you with that story now because it's not a secret. It's, uh, my, 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 se my secret is that when I was a schoolboy, I was rather successful, uh, uh, I, not as an athlete, I was never an athlete and everybody wanted mm -hmm. to be competitive, but I found I could compete when I, with my writing some, and when I wrote speeches and delivered them, I was really quite successful on the speech team. And um, the truth is that nearly all of my writing speeches were plagiarized. Not completely, I mean, I would rewrite, and but the ideas, the, the spark at the center of them, uh, I usually got from, from somewhere else. And, people thought I was a lot more clever or insightful than I really am or, or was. Do you I've have your own spark? <laughs> anyway, that's my secret. Do you have your own spark? Well, I feel that I do now. I actually, I like to write to my grandchildren and it's stuff comes out that I think is really useful and they seem to like it too. I, I truly enjoy it and I think it's, it's the real me. All ideas really are kind of out there in the universe waiting for someone to grab onto them. And, but now I make them more my own and put them in my own form and, and send them out in a way that, that I can feel proud of. So I think I've grown from that early experience, but I got a lot of reward, you know, attention for stuff that really, I think maybe I didn't fully deserve when I was a kid. Well, Charlie, sometimes, sometimes people hoard too many things of their own. And if you take some of that and make it your own, you're just sharing. I don't think you need to feel guilty. Um, so I didn't actually listen to everybody's intro because I thought we weren't allowed to. I, and, and I thought we weren't listening to each other's intro, so I don't know what everybody's job is. Uh, but I'm guessing, Skip, you're, you're like a, a, a lawyer. You seem to know about a lot about the law. No, no, no. I, no I, I'm a part-time voice actor at Disneyland. Oh. Cool. No, I meant Skip, because Skip, if you're a lawyer, because I feel oh, like... Oh, Skip, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I... No, I just got that sense. But Skip, so if you're a lawyer, you could tell Charlie if uh, if plagiarism is, like, illegal or if it's not, because, like, it's not, right? Is it? No, I I, I actually work in goods redistribution. Oh. Um, but, um, no, um, you, you know, it, it, the illegal is such an abstract concept and if you go around the world you find every country has different laws so are the laws even real wow yes well on yeah. that note before we get taken off the air uh it's time uh for to, some more donations and some more chaos so thank you for sharing your secrets You've all been so honest. And honesty is one of the most important parts of finding love, you know, is that vulnerability. Yes. So I'm very proud of you all. Um, we had a donation from Anonymous uh, who commented that love is a personality disorder that given time cures itself. I don't know if I agree with that, but thanks for their generosity.
curiosity. I'm willing to read that. Uh, but they've asked for Skip to go into the the confessional booth. So I'm going to ask everybody to take a quick pause while Skip makes his way over. And we're going to give Skip a minute or two. to. Uh, the chat wants to hear from you, Skip. Uh, they want to just hear your perspective. Like, you've been through this sharing now. Like, you've met the romantics. Like, you, wh where is your head at? What are you feeling right now? It I, I just got to say, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I haven't haven't spent a lot of time with people, and uh, this is just some fascinating folks. Um, I have uh, I, I, I've got to say that uh, you know Ember Lee, um, I find fascinating because she hoards stuff. She she collects things and she shares that. And you know, I got to keep things minimal. This ain't a yacht. This is a large cabin cruiser. So there's only so much I can bring with me. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm fascinating by someone, fascinated by someone who can take so much in and keep it for themselves. So I'd like to attract, huh? Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that, Skip. And thank you for your honesty. And, and you know, you're bringing a lot to the table with the romantics. A lot of mystery, a lot of interest. And so for a second, I want to just, I'm going to have a word with our audience to explain something about the, uh, about our, uh, about our confessional booth. So our confessional booth, the audience cannot, or the other contestants cannot hear what's going on in the confessional, unless there is one special donation option where you can cause confessional chaos, and then the contestant won't know you've done this, but everyone else will get to listen in on that confessional. So no one knows what Skip just said, but if you really want to cause chaos, you can. That's up to you. But now we have a new icebreaker question. So I'm going to go back to the romantics. I'm going to say, hey, romantics, uh, if you can come back to the stage, we have another icebreaker question. Now, uh, our audience is being very hard hitting here. So I apologize in advance. But they have asked, how much weight did you gain or lose during the pandemic? So our audience, you know, they're, they're asking this question. But uh, I think, you know, I think underneath it is like, what 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 was your experience during the pandemic and the weight is a proxy for that um i mean actually i my life didn't change too much because you know it's like work is all around me so like i i go for the same distance of walks to herd the cows and you know i i gained and lost the same two pounds at the holidays both 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 years so i'm good to go Huh. Yeah. I uh, am uh, a DJ in Miami. So, of course, the pandemic was like a huge thing. Uh, I mean, I am definitely not a Wall Street mogul in New York City right now. Uh, but if I were uh, a Wall Street mogul in New York City, I will tell you, it was, I just actually moved my friend, Chad Chet. Chez, Chez, just did a lot of stuff actually in microtransactions online, uh, especially sort of keying into some of the kind of underground. It was kind of, kind of amazing, right? That, that you spend all of your life just sort of like tied into your expectations for your parents and what they want you to be and what that's supposed to be like. And you follow all the rules. And then all of a sudden there's like this pandemic, right? And instead of like being on the floor of Wall Street, like with all the bells and the sounds and the hand gestures and like all of that kind of stress, all of a sudden you're just like in your home. You know what I mean? And you're like doing microtransactions and you're meeting new people with like kind of cool hacksaw names because they're like in this sort of like underground like day trading like thing. And like all of a sudden, like you have like this different sense of power. You have like friends, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, and yeah, they're like online friends, but like you have online friends and then maybe you get this call for like an online dating show and, and maybe maybe like online is the way to find love since you found friends online for the first time. Then maybe you could find love, which would be what my friend Chet would say. I would say as a DJ in Miami that it was great and nothing changed and we partied all the time. And uh, yep, I, 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 I have like, I have like a, a, a Peloton, so I didn't lose any weight. I, I yeah, uh, that, that, the question was a Peloton, right? That, um, yay, 
Hey, everybody. I love to live with the do you, love. Do you have the Peloton that um, sucks animals and toddlers under the wheels and they didn't recall because they wanted to make some money instead? Is that I, the one you have? I don't know. Is there like a is there like a number for that? What I could I could check. I mean, I, I don't can know. Ask. It's some sort of like treadmill thing. Either way, it's a real thing. Is, you can oh, Google it. Oh, I, I, are, wait, are, uh, Annie, are we allowed to Google right now? I know we're like sequestered. No, we're, we're, to... we're focusing on love right now. Oh, oh well, I, Max, I can't Google that, but I, I will find out. I, I don't know how. I hope not. Uh, for That's my friend. Actually, Joel, I, I, I have that bike, Max. I And I had to send it back because I was just, it was terrifying. But, you know, I had it. And, you know, it's it's crazy. This whole, Annie, I love this question so much because, you know, I might not have gained any actual weight, but I gained so much emotional weight during this pandemic. I just, being by myself for these past six months, I realized that, you know, I have to find a special someone to spend the rest of my life with. And just, I feel heavy because of that, but I also feel, you know, ready. And that's why I'm here. Beautifully just, said. I mean, you just never know what's next to you. Could be a regular yeah. exercise bike, could be a menace, could be nothing. Could be COVID, yeah, it's just stuff you don't know. Could be a thunderstorm, could be the lightning that hits you, but you just got to keep going. What else is there? I mean, oh, and back to your point, um, I, I started walking more over it, so I'm just two pound, eight ounces up. Weight is a number. I think we put too much emphasis on numbers at this culture. It's more what you can do with your weight that matters. You know, I've, I've seen thin people who are wonderful dancers thick people who are wonderful dancers. Some of them are more, you know, culturally uh, appropriate to our expectations, but uh, it's it's the feel of dancing that matters. Uh, personally, I put on a little weight at the beginning, but then I stopped drinking so much and the weight went off and I'm, I'm down about three pounds from where I was before. Good for you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't eaten that much during the pandemic just because, you know, e eating alone just doesn't have that same uh, same warm feeling as when you're sitting across from a big, thick, juicy, perfectly cut steak um, looking at somebody that you care about. So true. Looking at a cow you care about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just uh, recalling a theme from earlier in our conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was more talking about the person, but the steak does make it better. <laughs> Are you okay, Max? You, yeah, I'm good. You, <laughs> Somebody else tell me now. Uh, that was insensitive. I'm sorry. It's okay. You live alone for a while. Sometimes you forget to take other people's feelings into account, and and that's something I really want to I want to fix about myself. Taking people's feelings into account is so important, you know. Um, but in terms of of, of weight, um, I actually so I'm fairly certain I gained some weight. My clothes don't quite fit the way they used to, and I, I tried to find my scales, um, and I couldn't find the one in the bathroom. I know there's one, um, and I couldn't find the one in my bedroom, and I couldn't find any of the five that I've got in the garage. Or is it seven? Look, the point is, I tried to look. I couldn't find them. So I'm not actually sure. But I'm sure I have, um, you know, a little bit. I mean, a, a, a lot. But, like, here's the, here's the thing. Like, this time has really helped me get in touch with myself and, you know, who I am. And now I'm ready to get in touch with more than just myself. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, I have like emotional weight. I hear you, Maya. I get it. I had, um, you know, like most of my interactions are one-on-one, -on -one, whether it be with a human or an animal. And so, uh, you would think that wouldn't really impact me during the pandemic, but the problem is it's se sequential. So it's like one-on-one, 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 one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one, and that does, you know, people worry about that. There's testing involved, you know, 14 days down and so there was some lonely times. Um, I'm a I'm an avid yoga practitioner, so I don't gain weight. I just don't. 
So okay. what happens when you increase muscle mass? It's just all a fine balance, Max. Max, I feel like you co you're coming after me a lot. and I, I feel like that's maybe your perception. I don't mean anything by my question. Well, it is my perception because that's what I just said. Well, okay. You just put something amazing out there. Yoga prevents. Thank you. Pain. I mean, it, is it one pose or is it just you got to be on a map? I'd, I'd love to try that. Oh, there's, there's poses. There's lots of poses and lots of kind of um, sub genres of yoga. Like I'm a, you know, vinyasa kind of tantric practitioner, um, but there's so much to explore. You done like um, partner yoga at all? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. much fun. Isn't it? Especially with the right partner, you know, someone who can really help you get into the full pose. That's right, Emberly. I'm feeling you. Mm. We have someone <laughs> in chat saying that people who do yoga are posers. Oh. I see what they did there. Oh. <laughs> that's oh. what you yeah. do in yoga. Yeah. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. I'm the best poser. <laughs> oh. so I, I've never put turmeric in my yogurt. I don't know if that's good. I mean, but I'm willing to try Oh, turmeric in my yogurt. Because I love turmeric so much. Because you said you were doing like vindaloo, uh, turmeric, vinyasa, and yogurt. tantric. Mm. Oh, no. Chaz or Chaz or whoever you are. No. Chaz. Chaz. My friend oh. is Chaz. Oh. So would you say that's a Chasterick next to your name? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh Max! Oh dear! Oh Max! Oh. So, uh, have we heard from everyone? Is there anyone who has not shared their answer to the "How much weight did you gain or lose in the pandemic?" question? I think that's everyone, but I don't want to make sure I didn't neglect anything. So, uh, uh, excellent. Well. We are just about ready to move into speed dating. We had one, uh, we had one donation, which wasn't for a full icebreaker question, but it's, uh, they asked a quick question. So I'm going to go around to everyone and this isn't going to be a full discussion, but, uh, the question was, what was your, uh, like, what, uh, let me find the actual exact wording for it, uh, that came in, uh, from, uh, we had a $5 donation from Ex Excavating Jane who asked, what secret career has you always wanted to pursue? So if you didn't have this career, what secret career have you always wanted to pursue? And I'm just gonna go down the line. So skip. Uh, I'd say cat groomer um, because I like a job that has a lot of risk and I like kitties. Great, Chaz. I, if I could have my dream job, I would totally be a DJ in Miami. Wonderful. Uh, Max. I, I am a DJ in Miami. I am. Very believable. Max. Uh, I would be one of those people in Japan that massages the Wagyu beef. Excellent. That sounds fun. Pepper. Um, I, I would love to be a model because I'm such a great poser. Uh, uh, Charlie. I'd like to be a singer rather than a talker. Maybe country western. Maybe Ooh. just Thomas. Get rid of the height limit and let me be an astronaut. Oh, there's a height limit. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, Ember. So I've had about 10 ideas jump through my mind. When I was very young, I wanted to be an actress. And then after that, I wanted to be a marine, a marine biologist. And then after that, I wanted to um, be a sailor. And then after that, I decided I wanted to be uh, a hiker. And, and like, that's, just, uh, that's a great chain. Thank you so much, Ember. That's 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 so much sharing. Thank you. Uh, and, and yoga. And, and oh, and yoga. <laughs> and And Maya. It, it, you know, it's funny that Charlie said singer because I actually want to do what Charlie does and be a uh, Disney, like work at Disneyland because I like hiding behind costumes and I think I would be really good at that. Wow, that's fun. Well, thank you all for sharing that. Thank you. Um, We've learned so much about you during these. So thank you so much for the generous donations that helped us get to these icebreaker questions. So we're going to wrap this part of the show up and I'm going to uh, talk to the audience for a second and explain what's about to happen. So you uh, romantics take a quick break uh, for a minute or two. So if you're just joining us, hi, I am Annie Arrow. I'm the host of Cupid on Mute. And we've just met our eight romantics who we're going to be working with for the next four weeks. 
weeks trying to find them true love during our competition romance show. Uh, we are about to move into the exciting speed dating portion of today's show. We've had, and so each romantic, we're going to start with two romantics and then each romantic gets to interrupt at least once during the speed dating round and choose someone who's already on screen to stay on. Now, if you want your favorite romantic to be able to interrupt more than once, you can purchase a speed dating token. Uh, the counts on screen are not accurate for whatever reason. We have five more speed dating tokens left. Five of them have been purchased. So Chaz, Maya, Thomas, Charlie, and Pepper each have an extra speed dating token. So they will be able to interrupt twice during this round. Uh, very exciting to see where they're going to spend that extra chance to get to know someone. Uh, so this, that, and th we will end when everyone has used their interruptions. So this round will go as long or as short as it needs to. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge that thank you so much to everyone for their generosity and supporting Unexpected Productions. We have reached today's donation goal. It doesn't mean that we don't welcome more donations, but thank you for helping us uh, to, to continue to support this theater and all of, of the work that's going on uh, to keep our doors open during the pandemic. So thank you. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to ask two romantics to come on and uh, be our first uh, be our first volunteers for uh, the speeding and I'm actually going to call you out I'm going to say uh, let's go ahead and say uh, let's say Ember and Max I'm going to call Ember and Max out you two are going to be our first speed dating participants and I am going to get everything set up we are good and for all of the other uh, for all the other folks you can interrupt when you want. You get one interruption and I will let you know if you have additional interruptions. And again, Chaz, Maya, Thomas, Charlie, and Pepper, you have two interruptions during the speed rating, dating round currently. All right, take it away, Ember and Max. Hi. Hi, Hi Max. Um, I, I, I've heard a lot about your cows. I was wondering, um, how do you get out to see them? I, I walk out the door and across the pasture and then I open the barn door and then I walk down the hallway of the barn and I go up to the particular stall of the cow that I want to visit at which point I open their door and we cuddle. Oh, cuddle. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. But you know, it is important to show affection for the, well, for yeah, the things cause, that are... Because like that's that's what makes their milk sweet is the love that I, you put in I interrupt? Hi, hi, Pepper. Hi, can I interrupt? Uh, uh, you just, sure. You just did. Yeah, okay, so out of um, the two of you, Max, could you leave? Thanks. Sure, bye. Hey, uh, Amber. Hi. I just I'm want to say that I, I'm feeling the, a connection. I hope you're feeling it too. I don't know. I just wanted to have a little bit of alone time with you because I just felt like maybe there was something going on here. Um, well, I, I think that there is, and I was really excited when you came and then I worried you were there for Max, but so I'm, hi. No, I, no mm -mm, not for Max. I came for you. Oh, hi. So oh. you've done partnering yoga? Yes, I have. You know, I try and try as many things as possible in this world. And oh, same. Same. So adventure. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, what, what's been your favorite adventure so far? I think um, going down to deep sea diving has been my most adventurous mm -hmm. thing that I've ever done. Um, because it's so, it's like quiet and there's pressure and you can't come up fast. You got to take it slow slow has a lot of advantages to it you know mm -hmm. I, think mm -hmm. I think so hey y'all hey, um uh can i interrupt um <laughs> yeah I, i'm sorry and amber i, I want to catch up with you about that jewelry collection that you might have uh, hoarding late, later but uh, i'd like to talk with pepper oh well, I, i'll see you later pepper and before you two get started, I wanted to announce two new tokens that came in. So Emberly and Maya now both have an additional token, which means Maya now has three tokens. Uh, and and Ember now has two. And take it away, you two. Hey, Steve. Hey. Hey Pepper. So yeah, I, I wasn't sure if that uh, deep sea diving comment was a was a subtle metaphor or, or real, but um, you know it, it 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 is something that uh, I, I wanted I to get your attention. Oh. I wanted to get your attention. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I know. I, I hear that you're really, you know, into large bodies of water. And I just wanted to give you a secret message that so am I. I'm not afraid of that. It, I, I'm glad. Um, and, and, and that yoga is intriguing. So mm-hmm. it, 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 you're able to like twist around and get into small spaces and, and, yeah. and, and yeah, around tight can... corners and. Yeah, I mean, normally you don't do yoga around a corner. It's on a mat, but um, yeah, sure. I, Absolutely. I feel, like, I feel like our skills could complement each other in a number of areas. Mm, I love a skilled performer. Yeah. Um, can I can I chat with Skip for a bit, please? Sure, Maya. That's not a problem. I'll see you, Pepper. Hey, Skip. Hey, Maya. So I hear you know like a thing or two about diamonds, and I just have to say like, you want to be a little careful of Pepper? I think she's, you know, up to something. I yeah. mean, did you see the way she was talking to Max? Well, I, I, I think she's just friendly. I, I mean, from what she said earlier, she she seems to make friends very quickly. I, I think so. But I think, you know, you seem like a great guy. And I just want to be sure that, you know, you're being careful about the kind of people that you're talking to. Well, I, I appreciate you caring, Maya, because, you know, uh, a, a big, uh, big singing star like you, you know, y'all have a reputation that, you, that you're out for your own, your own glory and attention. And, and it's neat to see that you're such a caring person. I, you know what, if I like someone, I like someone. And I just think, Skip, like, if you stick with me till the end, I think, you know, we can, we can do something. We can do something pretty big. Could, could I break in? Yeah. Uh, by all means. Uh, I, I was going to mention to Maya that I, I had some thoughts about Disneyland to share, if, if you're interested. Do you mind I would stuff? love to. I'll see you, Maya. Okay. Talk to you later, Skip. Yeah. See you, Chara. Hey, C. Hey. hey uh, the thing that I kind of enjoy, too, about, about my work there is that I'm behind a screen all people get is my voice. And so I have a kind of uh, created identity that comes through the voice alone. Mm-hmm. And I, you must know that some from your singing. Right? I I understand you so well, you know, yeah. I just, it's amazing. But I just wanted to say, if you're if you're a little burnt out, or as I sense you might be from, from being a pop star and having to be there in person and physically and make your voice connect with your audience. A nice thing that happens at Disneyland is if you're inside one of those characters, you're not supposed to talk. No voice, it's silent. Now there's a real advantage if you're short because there are a lot of those character costumes that are really small. Uh, how tall are you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm five five, so I think I'd, I'd, be, I'd be fine. Ah. So, so sorry to interrupt. Um, Charlie, do you mind if I chat with Maya for a minute? Oh, that's okay. Thanks, Maya. Have fun. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi. Hey, Amber. Hi. You, earlier, you, you said that you, like, that your secret was that you didn't push for your success here because you were worried about, yeah, and I just, I just wanted to let you know that you have an amazing voice and your personality on stage is, is phenomenal. Like your energy is gorgeous. And I, I think you should go for it. Thank you, Amber. That's so nice of you. I mean, I just have to ask you a question, but like which song of mine is your, is your favorite? Uh, It was go, go daffodil. The way that you just embrace the flower, the leaf, the stem, the petal. And then when you sashayed your hips all the way across that stage, it was so good. Um, was I don't so believe good. I don't believe you identified my favorite song. <gasps> really? That's amazing. Uh, hey. Oh. Uh, hi. 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 Hey. hi. I was wondering if I could just talk to Maya for a second. Amber, I figured we could talk later, maybe. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, hey, Chaz. Hey, Maya. How, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? Um, I'm okay. I was, I was wondering if I could get your advice on something because, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I was just told by the producers that we're actually allowed to listen to the speed dating, and I didn't want to break any rules, so I, I've been listening, and um, I heard you say something to Skip about uh, Pepper. Yeah, you know, I just, 
I just don't like people picking on other people. And I think like, you know, we need, we need to be nice to each other. And I think if you will stay with me. Hi, can I interrupt? Hey, Pepper. Hi. Hi. Jazz, I really want to get to know you a little later. Oh, yeah. I'd like to have some time alone with Maya. Okay, okay. well, we, we can finish the conversation we were having later, Maya. Yeah, for sure. Okay, bye. Bye. Hi, hey, Maya. Pepper. Hey, there. How are you? Good. So, Pepper, before you say anything, I just Oh, have I to already say said you. something, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you're, you're a smart girl. I'm a smart girl. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not here to play games. I'm just here to win. <laughs> That's playing a game. Listen, Maya, you know what I love about you? You're a troublemaker. I appreciate that. I'm I'm not. I'm Oh. I'm okay. just here to find love and Oh, I know, same, same, same. And you have the most beautiful hair. I just wanted to say that. That I don't Do know if people tell you that. that. Or are you just yes. saying that? I only say what I mean. I don't I think you're beautiful. Uh, thank, thank you, Pepper. I really, really appreciate that. But you know, mm -hmm. just, just be and nice. you are so brave. You are so brave. You know, putting yourself out on the stage like you do. I just wanted to say thank you for your bravery. I, you know that I, I you're beautiful and brave. Th thank you. And uh, Pepper, could I have a minute with Maya, please? Oh, sure. Bye, Maya. Bye. I, just, I feel like I hear a lot about you singing in Japan and what you want professionally, but if you just get a night to yourself, what do you want that to be like? Wow. No one's, no one's ever asked me that before, Thomas. Uh, can, I, can I call you T? Is that OK? Sure, okay. please. I, you know, I just want to find the perfect man. And I just want to find someone who cares about me for me. You know, I might be 25, but I actually think emotionally I'm like 52. And I just want someone who can appreciate that. Well, if, if that involves a slow night, a nice sunset. And oh my couple of steaks or maybe a chicken filet. Yeah. Chicken filet sounds Hi. good. I just wanted to interrupt real quick. Bye, you Maya. No offense. You're lovely. I just really need to talk to Thomas for a minute. Sounds good. Yeah. And before you yep. two start, we've had a new donation for Skip. So Skip now has an additional token. You two go ahead. Hey, Thomas. I feel like we could be friends. We're into a lot of the same stuff, but the preference and how you like your cows living versus dead is is really off-putting to me. I just got to say. The hell of it is, you, you're the only other one here who gets the magic in a cow. Thank you. Yes. I mean, and this mean... is why I feel... I feel like we we could totally get along. It's just like that is a really fundamental thing for me, you know. I, I had this moment when you said, "In the end, all cows are cows." I'm like, "Oh, you're okay with a dairy cow going to the house in the end? Maybe, maybe, well, maybe that's a bridge. Maybe, yeah. maybe there is a bridge. Maybe not know? just a, a a fence in a pasture, but hey, hey, y'all. I sorry, I I want to interrupt here. Um, uh, Max, uh, can I can I have a moment with you? Uh, I'll, I'll see you later, Thomas. Uh, Ma Max, I, I I just needed to apologize earlier. Um, you were you were telling that deep story about your cow that you lost, and um, my mama had always said never miss an opportunity to make a fish or animal pun, and I took that opportunity, and that was insensitive of me. Oh, Skip, you're fine. Um... If I had been, you know, maybe in a different headspace, I probably would have appreciated it. Uh, it, it, it was it, it, you and I share an empathy for animals. Um, you, you've got your cows. Right. Um, I have my conversations with my kitty Athena. Right. Yeah, and 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 that that tells me you're a good person. You find them meowing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh. uh, hey, hey, uh, 
Skip, could I just get another minute with Max? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll talk yeah. to you later, Max. Well, I'm glad we had this chat. I mean, I, I, I feel like we were a little cut off there, and I mean, I like I like cutoffs, but you know, just depends on how hot it is outside. Well, just I love cheese, and. I've been working on vegetarian recipes too. Really? Well, that yeah. is so cool. I mean, just what I am in the day isn't everything I am. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, um, hi, hi, Amber. Welcome. Hi, hi Max. Um, I was actually hoping to get a, a moment with Thomas. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Th think about it. Hi. Hey. Um, earlier, I felt like you were you were judging me for taking retribution where it needed to be taken, uh -huh. and I just want to have a, a direct conversation with you about um, how judging things and not seeing their value is probably not you know the way that I would go about it. I, I think we should love everyone unless they take your partner. Um, and then we should feed them shitty cookies. If it looks like a cookie and it tastes like a lie, mm -hmm. I think I know what it is. And I think I know what it's worth. Noted. Hey, Amber, can I just chat with Thomas again? Oh, uh, oh, hi, Maya. Um, yeah, hi. sure. Uh, and Maya, be careful with him, just, okay. Okay. Hey, hey Thomas. Hey. I just feel like we connected on another level and I just feel like you get me. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, if you felt the same way at all. No, I was surprised, but it was a good surprise. I mean, I, I think, what do I have in common with an international singer? And all of a sudden it's like, well, maybe more than we thought. Yeah, I, I never expected to, you know, have my heart lead me towards a butcher, but I, I just hope you won't butcher my heart. Never. And I know you kind of, you know, you have something with Max, but I, I just want to know if this means anything to you. It does. I don't know what there is with Max. She's, she loves cows and I love cows, but I use cows. Sometimes I mean, understanding a person isn't enough. Just a note from the producers, Max pronouns are they, them. Oh, right, right. I mean, they, they love the cows, but at the end of the day, understanding and love are a little bit different. And well, maybe we got something that doesn't have that in the way. Uh, I think so. I, I was talking to Maya earlier and we kind of got cut off. Uh, I was wondering if I could just step in and uh, finish sure. finish that conversation. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, hey, Maya. Sorry, hey, we got Maya. cut off. I wanted to ask you something about uh, Skip and Pepper and, and then like Pepper came in and like, all, everything got confusing. Um, um, oh, look, I feel like I can be honest with you. I, mm -hmm. And that's like, I feel like you're not judgmental and I feel like you're kind of like a safe person to talk to. Um, like a, that feels very special to me. Um, so you were saying that you had some like thoughts about Pepper and Skip and like, let's just say that maybe for example, I have a lot of money in the bank, like just as an example. Like hypothetically? Yeah, yeah, hypothetically. Uh, let's say I do and let's say that hypothetically I don't have the best people reading skills because like hypothetically, like we could pretend that rather than like a really successful popular DJ who clearly knows all the music, um, I'm like a not, let's pretend that. Um, do you think they would, and I'm asking you because I really feel like you would, that you wouldn't lie to me and that like, there's maybe- Chaz, Chaz, I have to stop you for a second. Why do I feel like you're hiding something? Why aren't you being true to yourself, Chaz? Well, if I tell you, you won't tell anyone else, right? I won't tell anyone, but you know, if others are listening, I think, I think you need to be true to yourself. Okay, I just, I just wanted to know if you thought I would be safe here in the house, like that nobody would take advantage of me or anything, right? 
I don't I think everyone who's here is just you know here to find love and we're going to come out of this with friendships. Okay. Well, I hope I can count on you as a friend at, at the minimum. You can count on me. Okay. Um and if you ever wanted to give me a nickname that would be really cool because I noticed that you give other people nicknames and 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 not me. That's all. Chaz, what what what's your real name? What what did your parents name you? Irving. I think Irving is the perfect nickname for you. Thanks. Um there was It's You know I... Just just be proud of your nickname. Irving. Okay. Um but since I mean I feel like nobody heard our conversation so if you could just keep calling me Chaz, you know, when all the rest of the groups around cuz I'm not, you know, just um anyway, I just wanted you you to know that I I really appreciate you being here to 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 listen and I hope that if you wanted to tell me anything about yourself like you're a, a big singing star and uh, yeah. I I imagine that must be pretty amazing. So if you wanted to like I'm here to listen if you Thanks, Chaz. I appreciate that. Listen. I oh, got one more break in. I, I I guess I better use it before we run out of time. So hey, yeah. We well, got a little chance to talk. And I think you have a break in too. So so let's uh Chaz. Yeah. Would you mind letting Chaz and I have a little chat here? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Maya. Thanks. Hey, Charlie, how you doing? Hey, you know, I I got into this this voice work. But first as a disc jockey myself, but back in those days, in the 60s, uh, disc jockeys were completely different than what they're doing today, you know? Yeah, I you imagine. You were more of a performer, and I was more of a jukebox machine that introduced the next song. It's a whole different racket. Well, really like, what kind of stuff did you play? Music. Pardon? What kind of stuff did you play? Oh, top 40, mostly. Uh, but I, once in a while, I'd get jobs at other kinds of stations. I did country western, I did classical even. But uh, oh, most hey. of it was top. Oh, here's hey. Maya. Hey, hey, hey Maya. I'm just going to interrupt real quick. And for my last speed date, I would love to chat with Max. Oh. Ah. Oh, OK. Uh, it was great talking to you both. And, and I want to hear more about your DJing later, Charlie, because that. OK. Okay. But I can sympathize, Maya. I'd love to talk to Max too. I'll see you guys. Oh, oh, okay. Bye, everybody. This is hey, a Max. special rule for the last token, which is left in, to uh, which is left in Maya. So Maya has chosen to speak to Max. Congratulations on having all those tokens, Maya. Have fun. Thank you. Hey, Max. I think you're amazing and you're hilarious. Thank you. Wow. But I just have to stay say like. Stay away from Thomas because I'm interested in him and I usually get what I want. Whoa. Oh. Okay, you seem a lot more friendly in the lyrics to your song. I was a pansy once, but not anymore, but okay. I mean, my music doesn't always represent who I am. A lot of times it does, but you know, I've never been in love like this before. And when you know, you just know. Sure. And all's fair in love, war, and parking. So watch your back. Yeah, you heard me. Well, on that note, uh, we, it sounds like we're done. Producers are telling me we are done with speed dating. Uh, and and uh, we are headed to a confessional time. Uh, we've heard from our chat, and it sounds like chat would like to see Maya in the confessional booth. Uh, so I'm going to call Maya to the stage. And Maya, our chat has a special request for you. There are a lot of fans of your work, and they would love to hear... Uh, your favorite song, uh, Go Go Daffodil, I think it was. Uh, they would love That's to hear fun. a snippet of your song, Go Go Daffodil. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you would give us a couple bars, just, you know, for the new folks, the new folks in chat, that would be great. For sure. I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to bring up like my few favorite lines from the song. Um, because, you know, I would love if people would actually go buy the entire song. I think, I think it's a really good album, but, you know, just a quote from my favorite song, Go Go Daffodil, it's, it goes like, Go, go daffodil, you are the flower in my heart. You make me bloom like no other. 
and I never want to be apart. So, you know, it's a bit, you know, poppy, but at the same time, you know, it talks a lot about emotions and feelings and just, I like doing this, but I use flowers to represent how I'm actually feeling. So Go Go Daffodil talks a lot about me and my love for, you know, whoever I'm going to be with in the future. I love it. I love it. And and did I, I don't want to pry, but did I hear you say the L word in your last in your last speed dating round? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I did. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> oh, Thank my you. Goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, I won't say a word. Uh, and, and hopefully uh, you and Max won't murder each other and it'll be fine. So I'm going to call all the romantics back on stage. Uh, and, and uh, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up for today. Cause we're just about out of time. So uh, any last words from any of the romantics, any last uh, thoughts or questions for each other uh, as we wrap up this first week. I just want to say thank you to everyone for being so themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. It has been such a delight to meet most of you. I am so glad to have you here for the most part. <laughs> uh, I just want to say, um, just like a cow has four stomachs so it can really process its food, I, I, I look forward to turning over everything you've all given me in, in my head over over the next week mm. several times at least four i'll be ruminating on this myself uh max thanks for putting it the, that way and i just want to say ditto to everything i've heard from you i just so, want to say that i'm I, really excited to be here sorry if i interrupted uh that's what cool djs do uh uh, sorry, uh, you could go. I can wait. You can go. You can go. No, no, go, go, go. No, no, no. Go, okay. go, go, go. Uh, I, I just am really excited to be here, and I, uh, I just want to say that every single person here is just really amazing looking, and I really felt like everybody yeah. here is exactly the same, like in front of our faces as they are behind our faces, and I trust like all of you so much here, and uh, I, I'm just really impressed by how honest and upfront everybody is, and it's. Um, like it's really impressive and I just, I know that I'm gonna be able to find love with somebody here. And um, so I'm just really happy that we're gonna be on this journey together. Um, so thanks everybody. And it's gonna be like a long week in quarantine, not talking to anybody until we get to be next to each other again. And um, so thanks everybody, it was really great. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a long year of not getting to know pe new people. And, and now we are, and you get to find all these possibilities you didn't know were there. and it's just so good getting to know people well enough to see them. I, I appreciate learning so much about y'all. And I just know I'm going to find my future partner in, um, in non-prosecutable events here. So well said, all of you. And as a reminder for our audience, our, our romantics have agreed not to communicate with each other outside the boundaries of our group chats. So you're seeing everything that's happening. All the love's gonna happen on screen. Uh, so if you want to share this show with others, we're gonna be running a rerun on Monday at 7 p.m. on this same channel, or you can watch it on demand on Twitch or on our YouTube channel later on this week. Uh, there will be new milestones next week. Next week we have an announcement next week's focus will be getting people in three and two person dates to get to know each other better and you as the audience will be able to choose which two and three person groups are going to get to go on those dates so i hope you're ready to cause some to cause some love or cause some chaos but i want to announce the results of this week's poll which uh we were finding out who would get to choose the first partner for the first one-on-one -on -one date next week. And we had a, a lot of votes. Uh, we had a lot of generous donations this week. And thank you for helping us beat our goal. Uh, we beat our $250 goal. We had $309 worth of donations this week. So thank you so much to everyone. Um, and congratulations to all of our runners up. You know, uh, everybody's a winner. We had our, in third place, we had uh, Ember Lee Smith. 
Uh, in second place, we had Maya Ruby, but our winner, who's going to get to choose next week, the first, uh, invite the first person on a one-on-one -on -one date is Chaz Montgomery. Chaz Montgomery, you're going to be inviting someone on a one-on-one -on -one date first thing next week. So you're gonna have a week to think about that. It's a big responsibility. So congratulations. Thank um, you, everybody. Thank you. So thanks everybody. Spread the word. Please join us next week. Same time, same place. And keep loving your hearts because Cupid is still figuring out the internet. So uh, do what you can. All right. <laughs> so uh, until then, have a great time and take care of each other. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.